Welcome to the Tuesday, December 8th City Council meeting. Before we start the meeting tonight, we will have a prayer led by Councilman Carlos Graham, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Dear God, we seek your help with conducting the business affairs of our beautiful city. Bless this meeting with your divine intelligence and help us to make the best decision. We are at times of diverse opinion, yet we wish to mend our differences and reach agreement satisfactory to all. Please share a little of your wisdom with us to help us do the right by all people. Bless our service men and women, both home and abroad. Protect our public safety team members. Bless this world, bless our nation, bless our state, and ask a special blessing on our beautiful city of Jefferson. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. I will now call the meeting to order. Mrs. Pell, roll call, please. Branch. Here. Costales. Here. Graham. Here. Henry. Here. Hussey. Mihalovich. Here. Prather. Here. Schreiber. Here. Scribner. Here. Ward. Here. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to take a moment to remember Pearl Harbor yesterday and appreciate all those who serve our country. So I uh, wanted to take just a moment to do for all of us to remember. Um, also, I would like to ask this evening if there's any scouts in the audience tonight, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, always like to recognize. Okay. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adopt our agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item four gives me great pleasure to present the Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service to Marty Thurston, who is here this evening. Um, so Marty, if you would like to come forward to the podium, we would like to present this award to you and Mrs. Strope is going to give us a presentation. Thank you. represented can you hear me okay um should i start over okay let me start over so we're going to present the kevin meinhart memorial award for distinguished public service um, for those of you who don't know kevin served on the board of adjustment for the city from 1997 until his um, unexpected passing in 2012. Uh, during that time he also served for six years as the chair of the board of adjustment um, Kevin demonstrated during his lifetime his commitment to public service and continually represented the highest standards in ethics and professionalism. So in appreciation of his dedication and his professionalism, the Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service was born. And I'm very pleased to introduce tonight Cindy Meinhart. Cindy is Kevin's wife. And um, Cindy travels here every year from Kansas City to be a part of this presentation. And um, I understand that today is a particularly special day. So yeah, so it's Kevin's birthday, which is really neat. So, <laughs> uh, so nominations are taken annually for this award. They can be submitted by any member serving on a board or commission um, or committee, including any staff liaison or city council member. The candidate that's selected will display public service devotion, excellence and professionalism, um, outstanding enthusiasm, and they reflect the highest ideals of citizenship in their conduct. Um, this is the third year that, that we've presented this award. Um, in 2013, it was presented to Lucia Erickson-Kinchlow um, for her work with the Cultural Arts Commission. 
Last year it was presented by, to Norm Robinson for his work with the Firefighters Pension Board. And this year we're really excited to announce Marty Thurston as our recipient. Uh, and she has served on the USS Jefferson City Submarine Committee uh, for over five years now. And her volunteerism and dedication to public service exemplifies her character and love for those in and around our community. Um, she served in the National Guard and was a licensed practical nurse for 33 years. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Um, besides serving the city of Jefferson City, she volunteers on numerous boards and committees um, such as Operation Bugle Boy, Trinity Lutheran School Fundraising Committee and Youth Board, the Department of Health and Senior Services Committee, and the Girl Scouts of America. Um, most recently, Marty um, was very instrumental in the visit to our city by the crew of the USS Jefferson City Submarine. Um, they were here in September, and my understanding is um, Marty took care of them the whole time they were here, um, escorted them from place to place, and um, I think got a lot of uh, local establishments and local vendors involved in the visit, and uh, just did a fantastic job with that. So um, I'd like to um, say congratulations to Marty. Um, very well deserved. Thank you. Congratulations, Marty, and thank you, Cindy, for being here. This is such a wonderful legacy to carry on the name and what Kevin did for our community and his service, and really to carry it on with other volunteers such as Marty and what they've done for our community to uh, carry that on in his name. So it's very exciting and extra special for you to take the time to be here for this. And we all remember Kevin and what a wonderful servant he was to our city and appreciate all of his work. And we appreciate Marty and all that she's done. I know when the USS Jefferson City crew is here, Marty said she has a son that's in the military, and she said, I feel like these are all my sons, and she thinks about her son when she's taking care of them as if they're all her, her sons, and she really does, and, and takes care of them, drives them around, and does everything for them, and we as a city appreciate that because the USS Jefferson City, that, that's our crew, that's our, that's our submarine, so it's really nice that you extend such a warm welcome and, and take care of them when they are here in their namesake city, so I appreciate appreciate that and I would like to call Hal Dooley to the podium and are there any other members of the Commission here because we have a, a gift that Hal and I would like to present on behalf of the USS Jefferson City and I'd also like to present the award Thank you. Hal is a member of the committee, and um, on behalf of the USS Jefferson City, I believe they sent a special care package here, so we would like to present this. Half of the crew of the USS Jefferson City, the captain, and the Cobb, and the rest of the gang was here. They appreciated everything you did. Thank you. You're welcome. That's really neat that the crew sent a special gift for you. Yeah. So, so honored. very nice. And then I would like to present the Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service, presented to Marty Thurston in grateful appreciation of your volunteer service to the City of Jefferson, December 2015. So thank you and congratulations. And also we have the liaison, the city council liaison, Councilman Jim Branch, who serves on that committee. So we'll all go forward and get a picture together. Okay, thank you.
the guys. Thank you. And those pictures will be sure to post to the USS Jefferson City Facebook page so the community can see what's going on. And if you don't know, there is a cabinet out in our hallway right here with USS Jefferson City memorabilia. So we'll make sure that we recognize that. Thank you and congratulations. All right, item five, public hearings. We have none this evening. Item six, appointments by the mayor. Mrs. Strope. Thank you. Uh, we have a number of reappointments this evening. Uh, we have to the TIF Commission, Seth Bauman, Cultural Arts Commission. Um, this is actually a new appointment, Ashley Pringer. Historic Preservation Commission, the recommendations are for Mary Shantz, Bill Case, Jane Moore, and Sarah Holler. For the Convention and Visitors Bureau, Matt Allsager, Hal Dooley, and Colleen Taylor. To the Public Transit Advisory Committee, Royal Spidell and Terry Donner. And to the Police Personnel Board, William Burton and Wesley Dickman. Thank you. Do we have any questions about any appointees this evening? would entertain a motion to approve so moved second any further discussion all in favor Aye. any opposed motion passes and I believe this evening we still have mr. Dooley in the crowd congratulations on your appointment Thank you, Mayor. you're welcome item 7 presentations from staff consultants and invited guests item a University and Community Wellness Center Wellness and Recreation Center update by mr. Lockwood uh, thank you, Mayor. I just came from a uh, Parks and Recreation Commission meeting where the uh, topic was on the agenda. We had representatives from uh, uh, Lincoln University staff and from the architects there. Um, they went into closed session. The park staff was asked to leave the meeting, so I don't have any information to report to you on exactly what, what occurred. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Lockwood? Okay. Item eight, announcements by mayor, council, and staff. Um, I have several this evening. I will start with the, um, some information about the Housing Authority. The Jefferson City Housing Authority, following a nationwide search, has selected Cynthia Quetch of Jefferson City to replace Alan Pollock as its executive director. So I wanted to just share that and, and congratulate Cynthia and also thank Alan for all his years of service. So uh, we welcome Cynthia to that position as the city works very closely with the Housing Authority. Uh, Cynthia Quetch, Q-U-E-T-S-C-H. So I hope I'm saying that correctly, Cynthia. So she will be uh, serving when Alan retires in February of 2016 after 30 years of service. So we'll have to... Uh, thank Alan and uh, recognize him for for all those years. We appreciate that um, I'll tell you a little more about Quetch. She's currently the legal counsel for the Office of Special Education in the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, I would also like to announce that it is time for filing for City Council the city election filing period is December 15th through January 19th so there will be one council seat up for election in 2016 from each of the five wards. And if people are interested, there is no filing fee required, but before a candidate can file, they need three endorsements from residents of their ward, as well as a Missouri Department of Revenue Form 5120. And um, let's see here. They must provide that to the city before they're allowed to complete paperwork to file. And the candidate endorsement forms and these other links are on the city's website page, jeffersoncitymo.gov. 
at the city clerk's election page. They can get all this information. Also tonight would like to announce that the city is going to have a Snapchat geofilter. So we have a, a picture of that on the screen. And I know that we all hopefully have Snapchat already on our phone, but for those who don't, this will be an exciting opportunity. There's an event coming up where you can learn what Snapchat is and how to get it on your phone. Um, the launch party is planned for December 17th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at the Capital Arts offices at 1203 Missouri Boulevard. And so when people come to Jefferson City or those of us who live here, we can take a photograph with our phone and you can apply this filter. And Snapchat is kind of the, the I guess, the fun thing to do when you're traveling around. And you can take a picture and, and actually insert your photo with Jefferson City and the Capitol around there. So we appreciate Capital Arts for, for coming up with this. And I know the city, Jamie Abbott, has also been working closely with them um, because these have to be approved by Snapchat. You can't just do a geo filter. So we will all learn how to put Snapchat on our phones if you haven't already and hopefully come to the launch party um, on December 17th. Any questions about Snapchat? Anyone here have it yet? Jonathan, I knew, I knew you, would, <laughs> you would make us proud and somebody would have it here. Um, I'm looking forward to getting it. I, when it was Small Business Saturday, there was a special geo filter for Small Business Saturday. So they were able to go around and take photographs at different businesses and, and highlight that. So this, is, this will be neat for Jefferson City because other communities have it. So now we will be on the Snapchat map. All right, a few other announcements here. Um, I wanted to mention that last week was a busy one in the city of Jefferson. We had the mayor's Christmas tree lighting last Thursday evening at Rotary Park off of Bolivar Street. If you haven't had a chance to see that of the area of the old bridge, there is a beautiful tree and I have to give a big thank you to the Parks and Rec Department. They put that together. The tree is, is lit up beautifully. The whole area is so nice. They had um, entertainment from the Salvation Army Band and also the Helias High School Catholic Choir sang and it was a great event for families. They Parks and Rec provided hot chocolate and cider and cookies for the families and it was a wonderful time we even had Santa and Mrs. Claus there so that was a great way for the city to kick off the holiday season the following night was living windows in the downtown which was also a, a record crowd there and uh, Saturday was the JC's Christmas parade so I really appreciate the city effort that went into all three events I know our public safety uh, individuals are always on hand the police and fire are always taking care of what's going on there and directing the traffic and the crowds and and we appreciate their service um, and also especially having um, Parks and Rec set up the tree lighting so thank you to all of the city departments and I think those are all of my announcements for the moment, but I would like to uh, turn it over to the council if they have anything to add. Councilman Prather? I just had one change on our uh, finance meeting. It's uh, stating that it's Thursday the 14th of January, the next finance meeting. We actually are going to move that to uh, Wednesday the 20th. Okay, finance Wednesday the 20th. And then Councilman uh, Scrivener the uh, <clears throat> normal um, public works and planning meeting would have been on the 24th this month and uh, we have moved that to uh, December 17th which would be uh, Thursday December 17th at 7 30 a.m. so that'll be a change uh, for people that are used to uh, coming on the third Thursday thank you so we'll thank move you. that meeting public works to December 17th um, any other announcements from council or changes on committees? Um, I will also announce that at the next city council meeting on December 21st, there will be a presentation made on riverfront access. So we'll be looking forward to hearing that update and hope that um, everybody who's interested in hearing about the progress on that project can join us for that. So that will be at our next city council meeting December 21st. Item nine, Lincoln University student representative update. Oh, one more announcement. I'm sorry. Thank you. I just wanted to mention that, um, as you know, we previously received um, uh, indication that we, we received the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Well, we actually got the plaque for the Distinguished Budget Award, 
And what will happen is if we get it in subsequent years, we'll have different um, designations going down here. So we'll put this in a prominent place in the city because this is a really nice. So I wanted to pass that on and let you all look at that and uh, finance department and all the department directors and staff and everybody that helped pull that all together should really be proud of themselves. That was a lot of work to get that. Thank you. And I appreciate all of the staff for doing that. What a fine job. And it's exciting to have that award. Thank you, Mr. Kroll. Okay, Adam 9, Jonathan Jackson. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a, a few things when you're hearing. Um, we are currently in finals week at Lincoln University, and we are, we are all banned from campus starting on Friday at noon until January 12th. So this will be my last council meeting until 2016 because I'll be going home on Saturday to enjoy the holidays with my family. Uh, but finals week will be wrapping up on Friday and we'll be, we'll be starting classes back January 19th, uh, 2016. Um, also, um, when we get back, we'll immediately be starting our celebrations of our 150th year anniversary of Lincoln University. Uh, being here in Jefferson City for 150 years and also the education um, part that comes in key to, the, to, this, to, to, to this city itself with Lincoln University. Um, also, when it comes to um, Chestnut Street, um, on behalf of myself and the university um, and Dr. Rome, uh, we would just like to say thank you. Uh, we hope that one day it happens um, and that we don't want anyone to feel from the community that we're trying to um, uh, alienate the community in any type of way, but we hope that some way we can come to an agreement to where we'll all be happy and um, that we all can work together for us, the greater good of both the university and the city. Other than that, thank you guys so very much. It's been an awesome semester, and I look forward to 2016. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. And good luck with your finals. Hope you do well. If you need to <laughs> leave to study, we completely understand. Good luck with that. Great report. And we've been happy to have you represent us this whole semester. It's been very nice having you here. Our first ever Lincoln University representative. Item 10, presentations from the gallery on specific bills or resolutions. Do we have anyone to speak here this evening on items that are on our council agenda? We don't have anybody signed up yet, so okay, thank you. Item 11, consent agenda. Item A through F, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Any council discussion on specific items? <coughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 12, bills introduced 2015-76. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a $7,443 grant agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for public transit operating assistance. Thank you, Mr. Marash. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Clerk indicated this is the uh, MoDOT grant for our transit division. Uh, a little over seven thousand dollars and uh, the uh, grant runs from 2015 to 16 july of 2015 to 16 so this is uh, completing the paperwork so we can apply to get that reimbursement happy to answer any questions thank you any questions for mr marash okay 2015-77 an ordinance of the city of jefferson missouri authorizing a supplemental appropriation of ten thousand dollars within the fiscal year 2015-2016 budget for public art at City Hall. Mrs. McMillan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> the Cultural Arts Commission solicited artists to submit designs for the installation of a plaque in the front sidewalk. <clears throat> Mr. Don Asby proposed a mixed metal medallion, and uh, that is the design the Cultural Arts Commission selected. The amount for the project is $10,000, which includes the artist fees of $8,800 plus $1,200 for installation. And there is a, an art trust fund that was created many years ago, 1987, by ordinance. There's a balance of $27,000 in that account, and those funds would be transferred to an active account for this project. Thank you. Any questions? Councilman Scrivener? Uh, is this... Um, is this to replace the discolored and and so forth uh, plaque that's out there where now? The, where the city seal used to be. Where the city seal used to yeah. be. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I at first I didn't know what what this was to be used for, but I assumed that that was it, and and I 
long support the idea of getting that taken care of. So even though this is not something that was budgeted, I think it's a it's worthwhile and needs to be done. So I'll be supporting it. Thank you. Any further comments? Thank you. 2015-78. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, changing, amending, and modifying the zoning map of the zoning code of the City of Jefferson by rezoning 19.51 acres of land in the 2300 and 2600 blocks of Christie Drive, currently addressed as 3519 Bennett Lane, from RU Rural Use to C2 General Commercial, and endorsing an associated comprehensive plan amendment described as part of the north half of the northeast quarter of Section 26, Township 44 North, Range 12 West, Jefferson City, Cole County, Missouri. Thank you, Mrs. McMillan. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> You'll know this property as uh, part of the former Rickman Center, and it's located on Highway 54 and Route B. <clears throat> there are two separate parcels that are proposed for rezoning, highlighted in the black area, and they're uh, on, on either side of Route B. <clears throat> The northern tract contains 2.29 acres. Tract 2 on the southern side contains 17.22 acres. When this property was annexed into the city a number of years ago, it was zoned RU Rural Use. Uh, the owners, uh, there are new owners of this tract and they're proposing a commercial development of, of these particular parcels. Planning and Zoning Commission met to review this rezoning in November and recommended it be approved. The public hearing date is December 21st at 6 p.m. Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. McMillan? Okay. 2015-79. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri amending the special exception permit for Menard Incorporated mm -hmm. addressed as 810 Stone Creek Drive described as Lot 9 of Stone Ridge Village, Section 2, Jefferson City, Cole County, Missouri. Mrs. McMillan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> this application came to the Planning and Zoning Commission in November as well and uh, involves an expansion of Menards, which is located at 810, 810 Stone Creek Drive. <clears throat> That's a special, this particular development is governed by a special exception permit, so it has to go to the Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council for approval. Their plan is to expand the warehouse at the south west corner of the property uh, and also enclose some additional lumberyard areas. The um, materials that, the, that they propose to use will match what they're uh, using on site, so it should be a very nice addition to the property. Um, public hearing on this application will be on December 21st at 6 p.m. as well, and we've received no comment from the public regarding this case. Thank you. Any questions? 2015-80. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri amending a concept PUD plan for a mixed-use development in the 1600 and 1700 blocks of Highway 179 consisting of part of the west half of the southeast quarter of Section 15, Township 44 North, Range 12 West, Jefferson City, Cole County, Missouri. Thank you, Mrs. McMillan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This property is a vacant tract, a little under 80 acres, uh, west of uh, Highway 179 at Mission Drive. The previous plan envisioned for this property was a mixed-use development that consisted of 565 residential units and 351,000 square feet of non-residential floor area. The new plan envisions a mixed-use development as well, consisting of 200 residential units and 453,000 square feet of commercial space. Uh, the new plan also rearranges the access that was proposed through the site. Uh, the original plan proposed a tuning fork uh, system of roadways. Uh, the new plan would uh, reflect more of what the connecting road plan that was originally envisioned for the property, which is one roadway uh, straight through, straight west through the property. The uh, Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed this plan at their meeting in November and recommended that it be approved. We did receive correspondence from one person, and that correspondence was included in the packet. Uh, 
So the purpose of a concept PUD plan is to establish some parameters for the future development, um, including specific density and land use mix. Um, the PUD plan, uh, concept plan, conforms with the city's comprehensive plan. And for uh, the plan to move forward to a construction phase, additional documents would be submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council, including a preliminary PUD plan, preliminary subdivision plat, eventually a final subdivision plat, and infrastructure improvement plans. Uh, public hearing on this application is also scheduled for 20, uh, December 21st at 6 p.m. Thank you. Any questions? 2015-81. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Lamberson Lawn Care, LLC for cemetery maintenance. Mrs. McMillan. Thank you, Matt. Um, our current contract uh, expired uh, November 30th. Um, the purchasing division previously submitted bids for cemetery maintenance. Two companies responded. And both bidders were interviewed and evaluated based on a combination of cost, past experience and reliability, and expertise of personnel. Based on the evaluation, Lamberson Lawn Care is recommended to be awarded the contract, and Lamberson is our current contractor. They received 93.73 of 100 points compared with the other bidders, uh, 91.66 points. Even though Lamberson was not the lowest bidder on price. They received higher ratings on past experience, reliability, and expertise of personnel. Funds of $30,000 were allocated to cemetery maintenance in the uh, fiscal year's 2016 budget. So there are funds to take care of the first year contract, which is $27,024. Thank you. Any questions? 2015-82, Mr. Kroll. <coughs> An ordinance oh, of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, creating a new internal service fund to be used to account for activity related to the self-funding of the health insurance plan and amending the 2015-2016 budget of the city of Jefferson, Missouri by appropriating additional funds from the general fund. Now, Mr. Kroll. <laughs> As stated, this bill will authorize the creation and funding of a new internal service fund to be used for the accounting activity related to our health insurance plan. Thank you. Any questions? All right. 2015-83. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, vacating and discontinuing a 10-foot wide general utility easement in Lot 15 of Wakota Woods, Section 2. Mr. Moresh. Thank you. Mr. Clark indicated this would vacate a utility easement in Wakota Woods subdivision at the request of the owner. The Public Works and Planning Committee reviewed it and uh, recommended approval. Thank you. Any questions? All right. 2015-84. An ordinance amending the code of the city of Jefferson, Missouri by authorizing Lincoln University police to enforce parking ordinances on certain city streets. Mr. Hilper. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is kind of the culmination of a lot of internal negotiations I think the council's had and staff's been involved and Lincoln University's been involved. And the product is that one of the issues that, that Lincoln has in enforcing Chestnut parking on Chestnut is that they don't have the authority to issue uh, tickets or, or have administrative remedies on the streets, so on the public street. So what this uh, uh, ordinance would do is authorize them to either issue, e either utilize their internal administrative procedures if the person happens to be a Lincoln student, or issue a City of Jefferson parking ticket, and then that would go to our court. Um, in addition to that, it, it expands it not only on Chestnut, but also on several other streets that basically are adjacent to the, to the uh, university. I think that came out of uh, the Public Safety Committee. There was some discussion in the pre-meeting about who keeps the fines. If, if Lincoln utilizes whatever their administrative procedures are, they keep the uh, fines. And if they issue a ticket, then it comes to us. Um, uh, certainly, if the council now or later wants to change that, they can. But you know, for the five dollars that most tickets are, <laughs> we probably have that much in time. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Councilman Scrivener. Uh, after discussing it with other council members uh, in the pre-meeting uh, and assurances that Lincoln University uh, is uh, accepting of the amendment or the ordinances written and staff is uh, 
good with the ordinances written. Uh, I ask that we suspend, suspend the rules and go ahead and have third reading this evening. Thank you. Any objection to that? Mrs. Powell? An ordinance amending the code of the city of Jefferson, Missouri by authorizing Lincoln University Police to enforce parking ordinances on certain city streets. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right. Mrs. Powell, roll call, please. Branch? Aye. Costales? Aye. Graham? Abstain. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Mahalovic? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schreiber? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Ward? Aye. Bill passes. 2015-85. An ordinance approving a plan for an industrial development project for the benefit of Continental Commercial Products, LLC, a Delaware limited liability company consisting of renovating, improving, and equipping an existing building for manufacturing purposes, authorizing the City of Jefferson, Missouri to issue two series of taxable industrial development revenue bonds in a combined principal amount not to exceed $2,234,000 to finance or reimburse the costs of such project, authorizing and approving certain documents, and authorizing certain other actions in connection with the issuance of the bonds. Thank you, Mr. Hilper. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a part of the uh, economic development package that we provided to CCP to relocate from their St. Louis facility to here. Um, uh, the chamber takes the lead on industrial revenue bonds and so that's kind of their part of the economic package as you'll recall some months ago we did our investment of a uh, certain dollar amount I think it was three hundred thousand dollars to help them relocate uh, the bond council drafted all drafted the ordinance um, and they will be here at the next meeting to answer any particularly technical questions however I've got to tell you that in talking with Missy uh, my bill summary might be a little bit wrong although Probably what happens is uh, the bond council is always right, so we just don't understand yet what he's got. The uh, uh, the money here is we believe just for the property tax abatement, and so the uh, property tax, the bonds will be bought by the property owner. So that was a question earlier in the in the meeting. However, what Missy and I were talking about, and Missy, correct me if I'm wrong, is we're not quite sure on the 2015B project, which is the the. Uh, ordinance indicates is the uh, resin tank uh, delivery system and we were thinking maybe it was just the property tax so that's something we'll have to square away regardless the amount will be the same it's just what it's for um, and I think uh, I don't, don't know if the you guys have anything else to add to that but essentially this is a, the economic development package that completes for uh, bringing CCP here thank you I also want to take a <coughs> chance to thank Randy and Missy for all the work that the chamber has done in leading this effort and really appreciate that it's a great thing for our community and if you all have anything to add you're welcome to or if the council has any questions to address but uh, really do appreciate what you've done for this any questions from the council okay thank you 2015-86 an ordinance of the city of Jefferson Missouri authorizing the city councilor to acquire certain property by purchase or condemnation thank you mr. helper thank you madam mayor this is a continuation of the discussion we've had in a closed session a couple of times uh, the city's doing the roundabout project uh, stadium and we need to acquire some property and all the other purchases have been made uh, Trinity Lutheran Church unfortunately we can't uh, come to an agreement with them so uh, we do need to ask you to authorize condemnation on the property uh, the the appraisal was 61,000 and I think the demand we couldn't get any closer than about three times that so we don't foresee any reasonable ability to negotiate this down at least before suits filed. don't know if Matt has anything to add or not but just I think the appraisal was 67 oh it says 61 in the bill summary <laughs> I, think uh, I think it was 67 Thank you. Any questions? Councilman Scribner? Madam Mayor, the, um, the time frame with this is kind of condensed, and uh, so uh, staff has requested that if uh, we could suspend the rules tonight and move this forward, it would give them an extra two weeks to uh, try to get this done within the construction season. So not this year's construction season, but during the time frame that's available. So I ask that we suspend the rules and have third reading tonight. 
Any objections? I, I second that. Okay. All right. So with no other with no objections, we can move that forward. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mrs. Powell. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the City Councilor to acquire certain property by purchase or condemnation. Roll call, please. Costales. Aye. Graham. Aye. Henry. Aye. Mihalovich. Aye. Prather. Aye. Schreiber. Aye. Scrivener. Aye. Ward. Aye. Branch. Aye. Bill passes. 2015-87. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the City Councilor to acquire certain property by purchase or condemnation. Mr. Helper. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Similar to the last bill, the uh, city has the Basin 12 relief project that required uh, many sewer line easements. It's an improvement to the sewer line. And all of those have been acquired except for this property. Uh, the Jerry Peeper and Christy Huntington uh, Trust owns that. And so we, unfortunately, again, the appraisal at 6,800, and I think the demand was 10 times that or something along those lines. Then we just don't see any reasonable likelihood that we can negotiate this without suit being filed. And I should have mentioned on the last bill, uh, condemnation does require a, an ordinance from the city council, and that's why we're here asking you for it. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Councilman Scrivener. Madam Mayor, again, uh, construction is actually underway, uh, and, and this is a construction project uh, to relieve some uh, sewer flow overflow issues and actually uh, as part of compliance with uh, um, directive from uh, it was either the EPA or the uh, uh, Department of Natural Resources but anyway we we this is something that needs to be done and has to be done and again it's under a time constraint so I would ask that uh, we suspend the rules and uh, have third reading tonight are there any objections All right, mrs. Powell an ordinance of the city of Jefferson Missouri authorizing the city councilor to acquire certain property by purchase or condemnation. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Graham. Aye. Henry. Aye. Mihalovich. Aye. Prather. Aye. Schreiber. Aye. Scrivener. Aye. Ward. Aye. Branch. Aye. Costales. Aye. Bill passes. 2015-88. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri amending the 2015-2016 budget of the City of Jefferson, Missouri by appropriating additional funds within the park fund. Mr. Lockwood. Thank you, Mayor. This bill would authorize uh, additional money to be appropriated from the park fund uh, stewardship renewal replacement reserve, uh, specifically for vehicle and equipment replacement. Um, Funding would be used to replace a vehicle with a blown motor that was not scheduled for replacement, but which has been deemed not feasible for repair. Any questions? Thank you. All right, bills pending. There are none. Item 14, the informal calendar. We have 2159. And I would ask sponsor uh, Councilman Scrivener what what his intentions are. Um, Madam Mayor, with uh, I think the uh, the agreement, full agreement of the council, or at least uh, uh, certainly majority of the council, has uh, agreed that we should leave the bill on the informal calendar and allow it to die. So that's my intention to uh, do that. Okay. Thank you. And I did want to mention, um, I did speak with Dr. Rome about this uh, bill before the meeting tonight, and um, he indicated that he's very pleased with working with the city and the progress we've made so far. And I don't look at this as, as something that's done, but something that would be continued um, as we move forward with Lincoln. It's not just about looking at a small portion of the street. We've really, through this process, looked at the campus as a whole We've talked about streets like Atchison to Locust, uh, streets that we really haven't discussed previously that also could use some uh, improvements. We've talked about Clark Avenue and the need for that area to be improved as well. So um, this is definitely still a, a work in progress. And so our hope is that we can see it through. Uh, we have other factors that kind of came into play, such as construction and Lafayette and other areas and other factors that really do impact this. 
So out of it also came this evening the bill that allows Lincoln to enforce their parking on Chestnut, which is something they've wanted to do for some time. And through all the discussions that took place, we were able to see that through. So other benefits have come forward that, that um, have come from working on this. So through the process, there's a lot of staff at Lincoln University that we've gotten to know on a first name basis that we might not have known so well otherwise. Um, as a council, we've gotten to know the Lincoln staff. And as a council, I think we've also gotten to know the neighborhood even better. So um, my intention, I think the council's intention is to keep talking about this with Lincoln. Um, we know that there's talk about expanding their campus by adding a dorm, which would be on the corner of the Atchison to Locust that we talked about that needs improvement. Um, the other part of Locust had been a 50-50 county, or I'm sorry, 50-50 city Lincoln project to improve for half of the street. The other half at such time as the dorm takes place is something that hopefully the city would also um, mirror that and do a 50-50 partnership with Lincoln. So all that being said, I did want to say that I don't look at it as, um, as something that, that we're over with. There's still a lot of work to be done, but I think we've laid a lot of the groundwork um, not just now, of course, over the years leading up to this, but this is something that I think we're better positioned now to work with Lincoln on finding a solution that benefits the campus as a whole and the community as a whole. So I appreciate there's been a lot of discussion and meetings and time that went into this, and I appreciate all the extra effort on behalf of council, city staff, Lincoln, and the neighborhood, and let's keep that partnership growing because it's a benefit to all of us when we do. And I know the meeting we had here when we had a packed room full of neighbors and Lincoln students and representatives and people on all sides of the subject. Uh, I'm so impressed as a community that we were able to talk about this subject with all different opinions and still be, um, I guess, come to, to agreement that we need to continue to work on it and just that we all were able to voice our concerns and opinions in this manner and all be able to come forward and say that I was very proud of, of the community. So thank you to all for that. Um, moving on to item 15 resolutions, RS 2015-27. A resolution of the City of Jefferson, Missouri selecting a solid waste provider and service scenario. Thank you, Mrs. McMillan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> the, excuse me, the, uh, this ordinance or resolution will have the effect of bringing to a close the public part of the request for proposal process and um, has the effect of selecting Republic services to provide solid waste services in the city under an exclusive 10-year contract. The resolution further directs staff to prepare the contract for council approval. Thank you, any questions? Move we approve the resolution. Do we have a second? Okay. Further discussion? I'll say I appreciate city staff's work on this. Um, it was really nice to have two great proposals come forward. And I know bottom line, people often ask, well, what is it gonna cost? And to go from 1818 to 1465 for residential 65 gallon is really incredible. The fact that not only did it um, go down, it went down substantially. And that does include not only trash, but the single stream recycling that um, we're very fortunate to have in our community. So uh, we appreciate um, uh, Allied Republic's work on, on giving us that price. And also the fact that commercial rates went down 38 to 42% is very substantial and uh, definitely a, a plus for the businesses. So appreciate all the work and the outcome on this. So there are no other comments. We'll have roll call. Mahalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schreiber? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Ward? Aye. Branch? Aye. Costales? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Resolution passes. Thank you. Item 16, presentations from the gallery on other topics. And tonight we do have an individual or some individuals here this evening that are going to talk to us about uh, stuffing Santa's sleigh with the diaper drive. So if you all would like to come forward to the podium tonight um, to announce this event, there is a flyer at everybody's seat there. So uh, welcome. Thank you. 
Thank you for having us tonight. Um, we are proposing a uh, diaper drive of a ver very large amount. Um, our goal is anywhere from 20,000 to 50,000 diapers. Um, we're doing it one night. For a pack of diapers, you get a free picture of Santa. Um, if you donate $10, you can also get a free picture of Santa. Um, we are also taking independent um, donations. And we would like to invite everyone here to our diaper drive at First Presbyterian Church on the 18th of December. Um, it'll be from 5 o'clock until 8 o'clock. And we are also um, trying to raise um, cookies for the diaper drive um, to give away free to anyone who is a guest of the evening. Um, I'm not sure exactly what all we need um, to go further with this, but... Uh, we're trying to get at least a thousand cookies for the uh, diaper drive. Um, I've already got 80 gallons of milk donated um, by a person who is anonymous and uh, got it from Central Dairy. So we have the milk, we don't have any cookies yet. <laughs> well, Mr. Kemp, we appreciate you coming. I know you said you don't have cookies, so. Uh, so we have a package of gingerbread men cookies for you. So you're welcome to come and get your first batch of cookies for your event. And I brought cookies for the council, too, because all this talk about cookies, I decided I better bring some cookies. And it took all I had not to eat the cookies that I brought tonight. So um, I wish you a, a successful drive. So it sounds like we need to show up uh, December 18th, 5 to 8, First Presbyterian with diapers, number one. You want diapers of any kind? Yes, any kind, any size. Um, Jessica has a few facts about our, our partner, which is Parents as Teachers, which is run by the school district. Um, it's it's a very near and dear thing to me because I have a daughter and I know what it's like to be struggling and not have enough diapers and things like that. So I'll let her um, give a few facts <laughs> about why we are doing this. Well, diaper need um, is defined as a lack of a, a sufficient supply of diapers. Um, right now in Jefferson City, the Parents as Teachers program um, serves 439 active families. Sixty percent of those would fall into um, a high needs, um, low income category. Um, personally, I serve 38 uh, pregnant and parenting teenage families. And when I can show up at their door with a package of diapers and um, give that to them, they are thrilled. And for usually it comes from teachers at the high school. Um, they know me as the you know lady to give that kind of stuff to. And when I give it away, the kids are super thrilled. But we serve families. Our families typically don't ask for diapers. Um, but two out of three families with children under the age of three um, who signed up at our Southwest um, Early Childhood Center program in our Christmas program, they asked for diapers. Um, for their children. That was what they put on their um, adopt a family wish list. And so we saw this as a great need, and if the community can come out and support, um, parents and teachers will give them away to all families um, in our program. So um, it would be an excellent thing. Um, um, WIC and other programs like that do not cover diapers, just so you guys know. Um, this is something that we've been working on for about four weeks now. So it's, it's something that you know, is, is something that the community could really reach out and help us with. Um, or programs that uh, cover food and things like that. We have Toys for Tots and great programs like that. Um, there is not another program, I don't think, in the state right now that is like this for helping families that need diapers. Um, most kids use around 10 diapers a day um, to be healthy and happy. Um, a lot of our families use, you know, four to five diapers a day. So there is a, a really big need there. Um, Thank you, Mr. Kemp. And I didn't get, Jessica, what was your last name for the record? Job. Job? Job? Okay. Thank you. And is there a contact if people want to learn more about this event? Um, Did you want to give your Katie, number? Um, on, at the bottom of the flyer is Katie uh, Ethemus, uh email address, or you guys can contact First Presbyterian Church also. Thank you. So Katie, K-A-T-I-E dot E. P E M A at jcschools.us in case anybody would like uh, out yep. there listening yep. would like to participate. So good luck. I hope you get lots of diapers and cookies for those who are um, generous enough to bring diapers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here. All right. So I'll be sure to bring a pack of diapers. I hope we all do. Councilman Scribner. Uh, before they leave, a uh, quick question. What, what's the preferred, I mean, I don't 
buy that um, many diapers anymore <laughs> but is it I know they come in different sizes and yes the average um, you can pack. come forward so we can hear uh, at the microphone um, thank you the average single pack is usually between eight and twelve dollars depending on the brands I don't mean cost I mean uh, this the uh, size, size oh, right. um, nice. any size newborn till toddler or you know any size you guys want to bring um, we're not picky okay. <laughs> we have children of all sizes okay so. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. We will be sure to bring some. Thank you. I know Carlos has some on hand with his new grandson. So. <laughs> um, and speaking of cookies, I did want to announce one other cookie drive. Cookies for Murph, which is the Blair Oaks High School Student Council cookie drive. Um, they are raising cookies for the USS Murphy. Um, some of you might have heard Maureen Murphy, who spoke about her son um, at the Veterans Day Assembly and um, and also the other program, the uh, Operation Bugle Boy event she was part of. Um, her son, who was killed in Afghanistan in action. So um, the ship was named for him, the USS Murphy, and they are planning to send some sweets back to the ship. So. If you're interested um, at Blair Oaks, they would ask that you place cookies in a tin storage container, bring them to Blair Oaks High School by December 14th, and give them to Mrs. Bowles' room, B-O-H-L, her room. And they would greatly appreciate that for USS Michael Murphy in uh, memory of him, and I'm sure the sailors would greatly appreciate it. So that's why I brought the cookies tonight, to get us all geared up to help those cookie drives. All right, any other presentations from the gallery tonight? All right, item 17, any council and staff, staff discussion on presentation topics? All right, 18, any new business? 19, unfinished business? 20, approval of closed session minutes. Is there a motion? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, roll call, please. Branch? Aye. Costales? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schreiber? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Ward? Aye. Motion passes. All right. Item 21 going into closed session pursuant to section 610.021 of the revised statutes of Missouri. The chair will entertain a motion to go into closed session to discuss the following contract negotiations, section 612. Dot 02112 and real estate section 610-0212. Is there a motion? So moved. Roll call, please. Schreiber? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Ward? Aye. <coughs> Branch? Aye. Costales? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Okay, motion passes. At this time, we will go into closed session. Thank you for being here.